This week I made an epoxy river cutting board for a friend. I started by removing the bark on these nice curly maple logs I found in my wood pile. I then begun flattening the logs with a power hand plane before using a regular hand plane to get them really flat. I used my bench plane last to get them as flat as I could. I then used the power plane again on the other side to get them as flat as I could before sending them through the thickness planer and getting them super flat. Now that I had two sides that were flat and parallel to each other, I used the table saw to clean up the last two edges. The other wood I used for this product had already been partly milled from firewood. I finished the process on the table saw before putting them through the planer. After finalizing the design for the cutting board I wanted, I took them into the shop and cut them to length on the miter saw using a stop block as a guide. Next I got started on the MDF mold I would use to pour the epoxy in. First cutting down the four sides on the table saw before attaching them to the bottom. I attach the bottom to the sides using one and a quarter inch wood screws and this Alex Plus caulking using a generous amount of both so that there would be no leaks.
I decided to show installing only one of the sides here because there's so many great videos on YouTube with more detail. I'll link them below if you're interested in how to make one. After finishing the mold, I used finishing paste wax to coat the entire inside of the mold. This didn't end up working the best, which you'll see later, so I'll probably use mold release in my next project. I used Type On 3, which is food safe, to glue together all the wooden pieces on both sides of the river. I use grill epoxies, 2 to 1 epoxy, and black diamond pigment for the epoxy pour. I made sure to mix the epoxy and pigment for at least 4 minutes making sure to scrape the bottoms and sides so that it's all mixed well. After the first layer of epoxy had hardened, I used some sandpaper to scuff the surface and poured a second layer on top to get my desired thickness. I ended up having some excess epoxy from another pour and decided to add it on top of the cutting board to fill any cracks and make it even thicker if I desired. After removing the cutting board from the form, I used this one and a half inch router bit in my custom made router sled to flatten the cutting board. After using the router on the cutting board, I mixed up a small batch of epoxy and filled any holes on the top. I then sanded these flat before cutting the board to final dimensions. For the final finishing process, I used 7 sandpapers from 100 all the way up to 400 grit. I then drew a line on all surfaces with a pencil so that I'd know where I'd sanded first. I sanded all the edges first with the sandpaper before attaching it to my orbital sander and doing all the other faces. It's very important here to use all the different grits of sandpaper and not skip any to get the best results. You also see me use a microfiber towel to wipe down the epoxy after every pass of sanding. It's also important to keep your sanding pad clean, either using a vacuum or to blow them out with an air compressor. After sanding the entire board to 400 grit, I wipe the entire board down with water. After I let it dry, I sand it back down with 400 grit and repeat this process three times. This helps maintain the smoothness of the board in the future when it comes in contact with water. I use this cutting board oil, which I'll link below, which is just a food safe mineral oil. I apply it in excess to all the surfaces of the cutting board, letting it sink in for at least 20 minutes before wiping it off with a clean cloth. Because this is a new cutting board, you should do this at least three times or until all the oil has soaked in and it won't accept anymore. I really enjoyed making this epoxy cutting board and will definitely be making many more epoxy projects in the future. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to help support the channel.